Good morning, good afternoon everyone, and welcome to this Unity quick tip video. Today, I want to discuss how we can easily set up a move logic for a 3D character in Unity thanks to the built-in navigation system and basic ray casting. Are you ready? Then let's dive in. Okay, so let's say I have this basic Unity project with a 3D character, a ground plane, and some walls. Now, I want to add some movements to the character so that whenever I click somewhere on the floor, so on the ground plane, my character automatically runs towards this point and avoids all the walls if need be. To do this, I'm going to rely on two nice Unity tools, the built-in navigation system and the raycasts. Let's start with the navigation setup. The idea of the Unity navigation system is to define a navigation mesh and agents to work on it with a pre-built AI for pathfinding. Basically, the nav mesh is going to remap the flaws in your scene as a really thin grid of cells so that the pathfinding algorithm of the nav agent, based on the famous A star, can find the best path to the target point. This remapping can also take into account various obstacles that cut holes in the mesh and prevents the agent from going near those areas. So to begin with, I need to set up my scene so that the engine knows what I consider to be the ground, the obstacles and the moving agent. Let's open the AI navigation window and properly configure the objects in our scene. First I select my ground plane and mark it as a navigation static object. Then I'll bake my nav mesh. From that point on, the ground is a walkable area for all my nav agents and I can actually check this out by enabling the nav mesh display on my object. The problem is that for now, the walls aren't real obstacles. The agents still consider that those areas are walkable. To fix this, I need to add a nav mesh obstacle component onto those walls game object and make sure to toggle on the carve option so that they cut a hole in the nav mesh. Finally, all that's left to do is to add the nav mesh agent component to my character. Now, to actually make my character move, I need to add some C# -sharp logic on it to use the nav mesh agent I just added and to update its destination point based on the position I clicked with my mouse. So, let's create a new C# -sharp script called moveagent.cs and get a reference to our nav mesh agent. We can also add a require component attribute at the top to ensure that any object with this move agent script also has a nav mesh agent component on it. This means I can assume there is a nav mesh agent on my character game object, and I can use get component to fill in my reference during the awake. Also, I'm going to need a reference to my main camera, and it's better to cache it for performance. Then, in my update, I'll check if I'm pressing the left mouse button. And if I am, I'll use my main camera reference to compute a ray from the camera to the cursor position. Finally, I can use this ray to do a raycast check with Unity's built-in physics.raycast function and output the result in a raycast hit variable. Of course, you should make sure that your ray is long enough to reach your ground object. And to optimize your code, you can also assign your floor object to a specific physics layer. This way, the raycast will be limited to just this layer and the engine won't have to do as many collision checks. Unity layers are defined using bit masks. So, for example, if your ground layer is layer number 6, you'll have to set the ground layer variable in the script to be 1 left shifted by 6. Finally, in our c -sharp, we just have to assign the raycast hit point as the nav mesh agent destination, and our character will automatically start moving towards it. Of course, for more complex characters like mine, with animations and all, you'll need some additional c -sharp code to change the animation state, for example. But all in all, with just a dozen lines of code, we've successfully made a simple player controller that can walk on the ground, go around the walls, and reach whichever position we set with our mouse. Pretty cool, right? And that's it for today. 
I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial, make sure to like and share it if you did. You can also subscribe to the channel and notifications to not miss the next ones, and feel free to share your ideas for future tutorials in the comments. Also, if you want to discover more of my content, check out these two videos I made recently. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for more videos on coding and games.